Is anybody here this lovely guitar playing? Can y'all hear Jen playing? Oh, okay. Thanks. So I'm a poet. I'm an author. And I'm an educator. I ask my students oftentimes, who is the king of hip hop? And I heard somebody say Jay-Z. And I ask them, well, who's the king of rock and roll? And they say, What do they say? Elvis. Elvis. And I tell them, no, you're wrong. And I tell them, if you're not careful, your grandchildren will grow up and tell you that, uh, that they will tell you that Macklemore is the king of hip hop. They say, get out of here. I say, yeah, well, Elvis isn't the king of rock and roll. But the blues didn't know back then. Mamie didn't know back then what she was doing, what she had. She didn't know the lightning she had in the bottle. So I wrote this poem for my students so that they know what the blues didn't know. It's called, If the Blues, If the Blues Knew What We Know Now. If the blues knew what we know now, the wolf wouldn't have howled so loud. Muddy would have drank clear water. BB and Albert wouldn't be the only kings. And Robert would have told the devil to kiss his black bottom down at the crossroads. If the blues knew what we know now, they would have told their gangster managers and agents to keep your chuck chains, chicken wings, Cadillacs, dope, loose women, and give me my points. Told them where to send the royalty checks and shove their shady deals and shallow promises where the sun won't ever shine. The blues knew what we know now. Elvis would have been a footnote in the blues print. Jerry Lee would have to kiss the rings of Chuck and Fats. Patsy would have to kiss the feet of Ma, Bessie, and Dinah to receive their blessings. Ghettos would be replaced by Gracelands. Hip hop would know his grandmama and granddaddy's rock and roll gave birth to Beatles and Rolling Stones. Jimi Hendrix was their big brother standing out there all alone. Lenny Kravitz never left home. If the blues knew what we know now, James would have kept his afro, Michael his proud nose, little Richie would have properly crowned Prince, and Latifah would be schooled by Coco, Etta, and Ruth. But the blues only knew. What a wonderful world. Well, the royalties to that blues classic will be paying the tuition for each and every voodoo child. French Quarter Play will be paying for Ninth Ward redevelopment. If the blues knew what we know now, along with their pain, they would own their rights, their riches, their land, their songs, as well as their masters. Thank you. If the blues knew, if Mamie only knew. Thank you, Mamie. So you a man now, huh? I mean, you slinging that shit in your pocket. You got cats slinging it for you. You done brought yourself a new fly ride. I heard you moved out your mama's house and moved into your aunt's basement. I heard you moved your girl and y'all's baby in the basement with you, too. I heard you done moved out of school because you a man now. <laughs> well, good evening here. Good evening, Staten Island. Good evening. My name is Uncle Ruben. I got a nephew named Mo Beasley. He a poet. Y'all heard of him, right? Little old Mo Beasley, boy was Mo Beasley, he was Morris Beasley Jr. Well you called him Mooney because the kid got a little round head and shit. He kind of bright, you know what I'm saying? Oh, he was way back about 17. He was a smart kid, always smart, but about 17 he started to smell himself. He started to go the wrong way. So I had to show him the error of his way. It was a Friday night. It was me, my brother Fred, my nephew Flip, and my cousin, and my nephew Mo. <laughs> so you're a man now, huh? So look here, Mr. Man, step out the car. Step out the car. We come around to the front of the car. Headlights blazing. Everybody's on the block. It's a Friday night. Now, he about 150 pounds solid, even if he's wet. I'm six foot two, 250 pounds solid. And I spent half my life on the street hustling and pimping, and the other half in the penitentiary. So I says to this new man, I say, Give me your hand. Give me your hand. I wanna play a game with you. A man's game for shits and giggles. 
man game is called trading hits. And this is how it works. I'm gonna hit you square in your chest as hard as I can. And then you're gonna hit me square in my chest as hard as you can. We're gonna trade hits back and forth to the first man that drops. And the first man that drops buys the standing man another bottle of some bullshit. And since you're a new man, I'm gonna spot you. I'm gonna give you six chances to drop our old drunk ass on the ground. And after number six, if I'm still standing, it's my turn. No, no, no. Well, I can't hear you. No, but I thought you was a man. Oh, I guess you're not a man, huh? Well, take that shit out your pocket, give that car back, send your girl and her baby back home to her mama's house, put your ass back to school. And if I catch you out here talking about you a man, we're gonna play this game, whether you want to or not. You don't belong here. You're supposed to do something else. Go do it. With my Uncle Ruben, and that's what we call a nigga blues. Thank you. Thank y'all. I really dig it. Thank you for that because I know this is not a poetry show. And thank you for letting me tell these blues stories. And they are blues stories to me because I was taught that blues is the redemptive power of pain.